Section E, essay type number 5, and there are 6 questions in this essay. Acme has retail clothing stores in the United States and Europe that transmit daily sales data to the corporate office to be posted in Journal Ledger. Now, this is something that should alert us that the data is being sent from one country to another. So, this company needs encryption. Sales data is confidential. If your competitors gets their hand on this confidential data, they might poach their your customer away. You can't let that happen. You can't let your competitors take away your customers. So this is something we should immediately be alerted to. Each day, store sales team enter the sales transaction as well as customer credit card payments. This is again dangerous. Credit card payment information being processed into the information system might be transmitted to other facilities this requires encryption for sure when you're reading the the, the case the, this given scenario something that you should be alerted yourself that this is something i find weakness the system will alert the users if the negative cost or an invalid stock number has been entered cost cannot be negative either there is a cost or there is no cost so cost can't be negative or invalid stock number as in the system identifies if there is some incorrect input is being made. That's good. At the end of the day, let me take the highlighter. At the end of the day, batch total is created. The system summarizes the information to send and the batch total is checked again to ensure that it is still the same. There no change has been made. The files are then encrypted, good, that's good, encrypted and transmitted to the corporate office via the internet. Now, the issue that I was worried about has been resolved. The receiver of the information checks the batch total before uploading the information to the general ledger and then sends the stores a summary report of the activity received. The servers that house the general ledger system are kept in basement. This is a questionable point. Basement of the corporate office. You know what will happen? What happened in the previous essay type? Flooding will destroy your facilities. Basement is not the right place to put your service to. In a locked room, even if it's a locked room, basement is not the right place. They limit access to the information to authorized users only and maintain record of all the usage. The desktop used for receiving the transmissions are password protected. Means only the authentication is needed to gain access. Now, first question. Explain input controls, processing controls, output controls, and identify one each in this given scenario. First of all, input controls are those controls that ensure that the data that is entered is valid and accurate and complete. Input controls ensure that valid, accurate, complete input is because input has to be accurate. Otherwise, if you enter incorrect input, you will get incorrect output. Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. So that's why input controls are essential. We will have to identify also uh, which of these controls given in the scenario are input controls, but that later. Next are processing controls. Processing controls are application controls that are intended to protect the processing of the data. The information processing input entered in the system, the computer program should correctly process the data because during processing, data might be rendered invalid or there might be mistakes that that has to be ensured as well that the processing has been done correctly third output control once the data has been processed the output must be reasonable and accurate if there are problems then we have a specific group of individuals called the data control group and it is their responsibility to rectify the erroneous data right and this output control also involves Retention of output reports where they are to be recorded, where they are to be put. Now, these are the three uh, areas required, input processing and output controls. Now, we have to identify each one in this scenario. If you go back to the case study scenario, you will notice that he has given you some basic information. Here it was, if an incorrect amount is entered, invalid stock number is entered, the system doesn't, doesn't accept the information. 
doesn't accept the data. That's an input control. Negative cost and invalid stock number, they, they are not accepted. That's an input control. I see, input control. What about the processing control that the data has been processed correctly? For processing control, they have the batch totals. Batch total is checked again to ensure that it is still the same after processing. The system summarizes the information to, to send and batch total. Once the batch total is checked before processing and after it is like, for example, payroll, payroll for our 5,000 employees is five, uh, let's say five point four nine three seven hundred dollars. This is the total of payroll of 5,000 employees working in our company across different branches in the country. So this is the total of the payroll. Processing total was 5.4 before the data was processed. After the processing, it should be the same. The total of the whole payroll should be same before and after the processing. That's just a crude example. Otherwise, you processed 100 invoices. The total of these invoices was, uh, let's say, $15 million. After the processing, individual customer accounts were debited. The total of those must be 15 million as well. So this is a processing control, whether the system has processed the information correctly. And third was the output control. Let us see what has been given here. This one. Invalid stock number. This was an input control. Processing control with the batch total that are created and checked if everything is okay, this is your processing control. And finally, there is an output control with the final batch checked and the sending of the activity report that's finally printed by the system. So you need to identify these all three controls from the given scenario. Done. Next, define data encryption and describe why there is much greater need for data encryption methods when using the internet. Of course, data encryption, as I said, is scrambling of the data in a form that is uh, confidential. And if anyone intercepts, if someone gets ha his hand on your information, it is in a form that is not readable. It can only be read by the person with the matching description key. He, uh, in decryption key, not description, decryption. You encrypt the data, that this is my information, and I want to send it in a secure lines. I will encrypt using my private key. And I will use the receiver's public key. Now this data is in a form that is not readable by others. When this information is sent to the receiver, the receiver will decipher, decrypt this information using his private key. And then he can get whatever was given or whatever was mentioned in this, that piece of information. It's a public key, private key combination, RSV. I'm sure those who have read the theory, they would know what I mean. So using this encryption technique, information can be securely sent across the communication lines. It can only be decrypted, deciphered by the one for whom it was intended with a specific private key. So data encryption is particularly important for situations where internet is involved because lot of traffic on the internet, you never know your information might be intercepted and could be used for unauthorized or illegal or unethical use. Right? So that's very essential that the management should uh, should consider this issue and they have already uh, systems in place, they use data encryptions. Right? So managers use data encryption to protect information, confidential client information, business financial information needs protection. Around these lines you can give your Response, not overdoing is required, just limited what is required. Identify two procedures that ACME or ACME could implement to better limit access to its physical hardware. That's very simple. How can we limit access to our physical hardware? The list could be long. First, you need to, basement was not right. You have to put it in some safer location. <laughs> basement is not the right. So first, you need to change the location. That's the first thing you should do. Second, consider a place that is less prone to any natural disaster. Earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, etc. Some suitable place where the data centers could be, could be installed. Second point. Third, employees' entries who will use the information system. 
their entries and exits, exits must be logged in automated log books who entered when entered he did what and when did he logged out and which terminal did he use to log in so complete logged entries must be available this is the third check only authorized individuals who have something to do with the it they are allowed to gain access to facilities not any everyone or anyone who wants to gain access should be allowed only authorized individuals who have something with the it department or who have some role to play or those who are within the department they are the one to be allowed fourth then fifth you can issue keys to authorized personnel those who are authorized to gain access they should be provided keys and those keys must be periodically changed so that if it's easy to get a key copied nowadays so those keys must be periodically changed password like a b c d 1 2 3 4 this is common password many people use even i have these password to some of my uh, accesses but this is not a suitable password you need to use some strong passwords that the combination of small capital and small alphabets combination of alphanumeric combination like these these are hard to guess and finally sixth one you can say biometric verification identification thumb impressions your if the system is too uh, sensitive maybe iris scanning using your eyeball as an as an identification as a biometric identification this could be used as well so these are few uh, controls that we can implement to limit the access to our facilities around these you can give your responses next identify two ways that acme could limit access to its data and computer programs now this is programs now that was the physical limit that was the physical limitation now we need logical controls how we can limit the access to our programs first login ids with password this is the course all of you are aware biometrics simulated also access restrict access to physical facilities it could also be used to access the uh, to the system like thumb print to get into the systems right second third this is our system who try to log in from what ip address firewalls physical firewalls hardware based or software based anti viruses anti spy softwares intrusion detection system we discussed yesterday or even smart card so these are the ways we can restrict access to our information system how can separation of duties enhance system security we discussed yesterday whether systems are manual or computerized you need to have segregation in these four areas custody authorization record keeping and reconciliation must be done by separate because in information system we have different dynamics we don't have custody or authorization we have different individual system analysts programmers operators data control group and in the older system 30 or 40 years ago program librarians it was his responsibility to bring the uh, the program that was to that was to be run in the system program on spindles now we have everything on the system but 40 or 50 years ago the system that needed the software system that needed to be run it uses it used to be brought from the library and then it was loaded on the system after programming and processing it was taken out and then put it again so this is no longer relevant in current circumstances uh, systems have become very smart very efficient they take very little space and no need of off site location of program libraries so this is essential that your system analyst should have defined roles to play programmers will work only on a stand alone copy of the software that is not live operator will only work on the specific allowed domain and data control group they are the people allowed to make changes in the data that or the errors that have been com committed by the system or certain errors during the processing run so every individual in the it department should have specific roles to play a programmer should not be allowed to work directly on the live program 
operator should not have access to the program files. He is only allowed to work. So, this kind of segregation we in, is important. Otherwise, incompatible duties, incompatible work would only put business in trouble. Any individual who has unlimited access to computer, its programs, live data, he can do anything. He has the opportunity to commit a fraud and hide it. Right? That's why it's essential to separate duties and control procedures. Authority and responsibility just like in conventional system. In IT system, you need this segregation as well. Operators should only be able to operate. Programmers should be only be allowed to work on an offline copy of the software. Right? Like it, so and so on. Identify two accounting system duties that should be kept separate to improve internal controls. Two accounting system duties that should be kept separate to improve internal control. We discussed data control group. They have very important role to play. The data control group, this group is responsible to review records for evidence of unauthorized computer accesses. Data control groups should maintain registers of computer access codes, help acquire new accounting software, coordinate security controls with specific computer personnel, reconcile input, output, distribute output. If there is some error in the system, they are the one to rectify. This person should be independent of computer operation. He is not operator. Control group personnel are not related to operations. Now, if a person who is in data control group and is also computer operator, these are incompatible duties. Operators are different, data control individuals are different. Then computer operators, as opposed to what? They should not have access to program documentation and logic. Programmers should not have access to live program that is currently run on the organization server. So, this just a couple of these distinctions and these duties that must be separate must be given to two separate individuals. You can just discard it because our CMA examiner doesn't expect us to be IT specialists. It's just that we need to know the basics of IT because as a management accountant, we should appreciate what are essential characteristics of good information system in an organization. Right? So, disaster recovery, segregation of duties, input controls, output, just basic idea. Otherwise, computer science itself is a huge dimension and of course we are not required to jump deeper into it. Whatever we know, whatever Glime tells us and just basic understanding is sufficient and that should be all.